it is less skilled. Yeah, but yes. I don't think that makes it any better or worse, it's just different. Despite designing gardens for a living, Charles still hasn't settled on his design. I'm a little bit experimental. I've gone slightly off piece. I'm not starting with a basic chair as a design. I'm slightly nervous that I could look a complete twit. When I return to the camp a few days later, I learn that Sarah's ducking out of the challenge and immediately think it's a big mistake that she may come to regret later. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. I'm really well, yeah. What did you think you were going to get out of this? Why did you start this? I wanted to discover what it was like mentally and physically, you know, how challenging it was to work as, as the Bodgers did. I wanted to do all of that. It was just a lot more difficult. And with your stick furniture, I mean, obviously you're not doing the same as the guys, which changes everything, because the whole idea was that you'd all do it together and, you know, you'd share the experience. Oh, I, I don't know. Just part of me just thinks perhaps I could just not do the stick furniture, just get a piece of log and do a ladder back chair. And if mm. I haven't completed it in eight days, at least I've tried to do that. Mm. Maybe. If you gave it a go and pushed yourself a bit harder out there to do what they were doing, you might get more back out of it. I think that's unfair, because I think that I have, I have pushed myself, and I think I've pushed myself to the limits, right. if not further than that. Well, OK, that's a fair comment. But after sleeping on it, Sarah has a change of heart. What Monty kind of pointed out yesterday was that I'm here to learn traditional methods. I want to make an identical chair to this, but out of the green wood processes that you've taught us in the last four weeks. Brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, God, that well, no, that's fantastic. You're going to need to concentrate on that measuring thing <laughs> and the accuracy thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, great. Go for it. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thank you. And Sarah isn't the only one who's lost time deliberating. After two whole days, Charles has only just decided on a design. I think if time permits, I'd like to try and do a rocking chair on the basis that that kind of adds everything up. Um, it ticks all the boxes. Um, I'm not as quick and as uh, proficient as Tom is, so I'm going to find that a bit of an uphill battle. Excellent, we'll get on with it then. Yeah, I better have. <laughs> so now they're all committed. But if they're going to meet the deadline, Charles and Sarah have got some serious catching up to do. I'll put in as much time as possible to get it done. I want to be proud of it. It's a really, really difficult challenge, this final task. To be asked to make a freestyle chair after so little experience is a massive ask. It's taking me a lot longer than I had imagined or have allowed for. At the beginning, there's no way that I would have done this. It's knowing the technique and building up your strength to be able to do it. There's a different level of consistency here compared with last week. These are the same sort of qualities as the boys' ones, so you're back in the race again, which is <laughs> just fantastic. Sarah's tucked herself away, and who knows what she might put out of the bag. And I hope she does, really, to be honest. It would be brilliant if her three wins, I think. Do you know when you just give everything, but you might not get there? And the more you give, the more you've got to lose, really. I'm trying to do the best I can. Perhaps that will be my downfall. I haven't seen Charles this focused yet. Yeah, I mean, it is no racket. There's no question about it. There are three days left to go, and they're all feeling the pressure. In his rush to make up time, Charles again slips up by drilling a hole in the wrong place in one of his chair legs. So that hole should be below this. It should be here. So I've got to remake that bit, which I... Probably, I will get done, but I certainly won't get the thing finished now. Oh! It's a disaster. Back in the saddle. First thing you should do after a crash. There's nothing Charles can do except make another leg, and fast. Oh. Tom and Sarah both stop work on their own chairs to help him. So you've got all your weight on that, Tom. Thank you very much, everybody. No problem. As if the looming deadline isn't pressure enough, with just two days to go, Mike Abbott, the leading Greenwood expert in the country, arrives in the camp. He is, like, the man. Um, so I'm feeling quite anxious, actually. Yeah, the pressure's on him. I suppose it's like your head teacher coming to look at your work. 
I'm really nervous. Hi, Hi Mike. Tom. Hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. So what are you up to then, Tom? Um, I'm just trying to sort out my slats from the back of my chair. I need to make these parts, the top and bottom rail and the right. spindles. So, <laughs> so you're going to be full at it this weekend? It. I'd say, yeah. yeah. Well, crack on with it, Tom. <laughs> I'm Mike. Hi, Hi Mike. Yeah, hi, Charles. How you're you? Charles. Then this yeah. is part of your final Yeah, final I'm construction. Make a rocking chair. I made a mistake the other day, so I had to start again on another leg, which is always a bit of a, a nuisance. Right. So, but you'll not do that again, will you? No, I won't do it. <laughs> you can read things so people can tell you things until you've actually done it. I yeah. mean, this, yeah, this no, is why it's a major mistake. 24 years of experience means there's not a mistake I haven't made, I shouldn't think. Yeah. If I haven't made it, I've seen somebody else make it, and, and that's the only way it sticks. Sarah? Right, Sarah? Right, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What are you making then? I'm making the child's chair. I've got all my components, yeah. so um, my, my sides are made. So I need to do my back, pop the sides together, and then seat it and oil. Well, I can see you've got a lot to be getting on with, so I'll leave you to it then. Thank okay. You. I'm excited by the idea that they're uh, you know, pushing ideas and trying things out, but that's that's you know chances you know it's 50 50 chance of it actually working. With just 24 hours to go, none of them are nearly ready. I've got a long way to go before I finish. And as the evening draws into night, even Tom's chances of finishing his chair are looking slim. I really don't want to leave here without a finished chair. Six weeks ago, I first came here to meet the trainees, and I'm fascinated to see what they've managed to achieve in this incredibly short time. How are things? Tense, so I like the sound of that. Thank you, thank you. I see. Yeah, and you. Okay. Sarah's still down there. Right. How's Fini she doing? Finishing her chair. Uh-huh. And these guys, well, Tom probably will finish in time, just. And Charles has thrown in the towel and making his last bits beautifully, but not putting it together. How do you feel about that? I think he's made the right decision for him. He wants to get it right, as opposed to finished in time. Mike. This is Mike. How nice to Mike meet you. Hi, Monty. Very nice to meet you. We meet at last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are things going here? It's going great. What I love is what always happens in chairs is that the maker's characteristics, character, is coming out in each chair. And this is a beautiful example of that, actually. Really? How are you? I'm good, You're thank all right. you. Nice How to you? see you. Nice to see you, too. And Before I Mike makes his expert really well. judgment, I'm, I'm keen to see the progress for myself. I'm going to it's a good chair, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Two weeks ago, when I said you make a chair, you got cross with me. I could I, see it. I got. I, I didn't get cross. I think I was so frustrated in myself that I wanted. I knew that I wasn't doing what I came here to do, mm. and I kind of just thought, I've just got to give it a go. Fantastic. But have you actively enjoyed it? Making this chair yeah. has been one of the most amazing things that I've ever done. I've enjoyed absolutely every single part of the process. I'm going to go home happy. That's what good. I came to do. Very, very And good. thank you for your chat a few weeks ago. It's what I needed. I'm yeah. really delighted. So this is part of the chair that isn't going to be assembled. This is it, yeah. Would it's you say that, that you were a perfectionist? Um, I want to get it right, yeah, definitely. And um, I think, you know, everybody sets their own standards. So what you're saying is, is that learning the craft is much more important than any idea of a competition. Absolutely, and yeah. I think you've got to strive for perfection. I mean, if you don't, how can you have any pride in what you're doing? How's that going? It looks it's good. good, yeah. Is your fascination growing with this? I mean, it's six weeks now. Yeah, it's definitely not waning, I must say. Yeah. Right, it's time to be stand up and be counted. What are you looking for? What criteria are you using? Well, I think, firstly, what basically is a chair there for? And a chair is a thing to sit on and sit on comfortably. After that come in things like looks and quality of finish, but they're not the, the be-all and end-all. Let's start with Sarah. It's a nice-looking little chair. You have not achieved a polished finish. I can see a gap in that joint. Turn it round. That is a, a wonderful joint there. That's really good and tight. She's made these three little spindles here. And if I look at those, that is really, really rock solid. So that's, that's a really nice, nice little detail, that, in, in the chair. So what about functionality? I'm afraid I'm going to sit in it. And uh, we're on a rather soft floor, but I'm happy to rock back in that. I don't detect any creaking whatsoever. Well done, Sarah. It's a beauty. 
This is Tom. He has got a rather fine finish. This is a weak point here that is rotating there. We've got to test it. Uh, nice. Yeah, good. It's nicely made. Yeah. I think it looks beautiful. To the next chair, which is Charles's. I mean, what I would really like to be able to do is, is undo all this lot now and feel the frame. Can I do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah by all means. Yeah. We've got two nice wooden frames. I can do that. I can feel the flex of the wood in it. That's bringing out the greenwood quality. Uh, they look to be really solid, really nicely done. But I suspect there's an awful lot of time being spent on there, which could have been spent on doing something else on the chair, which would have got you nearer to getting it complete. Mm. I'm afraid I come back again to saying what I, I say so often is that the chair reflects the person. That reflects Sarah. <laughs> it's full of character, it's warm, uh, and, and it's honest. This has been made confidently, it's big, it says, here I am, take me as I am. This says, I need to sort things out a bit. You've got to choose one of these three and decide that it is the best chair of the three. <laughs> well, I don't think it'll be any great surprise to you that Charles is not, not in, the, in the final runoff. Between these two, I just love Sarah's chair and it, it is Sarah and I know she is, I am absolutely certain she is going to go on and pursue this, but I have to say that this is the winning chair. There has to be no doubt about it. If Tom wanted to go on and become a full-time chair maker, he can make it. This is a beautiful oh, well, chair. Well done, Tom. Thank you. Well done, Tom. <laughs> thank you. Very good. Well thank you. Cheers, God. Thank you very much. I feel that I really have learned something since I've been here. I don't know where it'll take me or what I'll do with it, but, I mean, there's a hundred things that I could potentially do with it. It's been so, so intense. All the things that I held so important, like the way that kind of I look and all that stuff, just goes out the window. Crafting something, it's just more important than anything else. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. It's been a, just an incredible experience, the whole thing. You know, the skills I've learned, and I suppose really the, the kind of the understanding that I could, I could carry this on, it could become like a big part of my life, and that's, that's really exciting. Well, I think everybody feels a bit drained after that, and do you know, I think Sarah nearly won that. I think she was a whisker away. Because although she had to overcome so much, the chair she made was both very good and also had real character. But Tom is clearly good at making chairs, and, and if he wants to, he's got a career ahead of him. He could go on to be a really good chair maker. And what's wonderful about all this, for all of us that have been involved in it, is the connection. A simple thing like a chair suddenly becomes meaningful. It's full of character. It's full of the woods and the trees and it really adds depth to an everyday object. Next time, we introduce a painter and decorator, a builder of cob houses, and a roofer to the craft of thatching. How does this compare with the sort of pace they have to go at? Remarkably slow. <laughs> right. <laughs> While they wrestle with the intricacies and vagaries of straw... It's not coming off. It, it is. just needs time. No, it's coming off. I'll be discovering what Thatch can tell us about our rural past. It's a real honour, really, to be able to lay a thatch on a, on a piece of history.